RVing in the cold doesn't have to be miserable. It can actually be enjoyable. And the good thing is if you're warm and comfortable in your RV, there's a chance that you're gonna have a much better time while RVing in the cold than, than if you were cold and miserable. The good thing is too, we have a lot of options for heaters in the RV. We have heaters like furnaces or diesel heaters. We have heaters like Mr. Buddy heaters that take no power or catalytic heaters or all electric options like a heat pump and space heaters or the ever popular electric fireplace inside of RVs. But today I want to cover a handful of heaters, the ones that we didn't cover last time that we had a video on this, but some of the recommendations that you guys put out of heaters that you love to use inside of the RV. So the first one is an oil filled electric heater. So we've talked about other space heaters and a lot of people had recommended that they love having an oil filled space heater inside of their RV because it does feel a little bit more safe. You don't have any fan noise. It's silent in the background. So it does give off that heat a little bit different. But when you're looking at space heaters, there's a couple of things that are really important and you should take notice of. Number, number one, when you're looking at space heaters, almost all of these are gonna be around the 1500 watt type of a space heater. Now, they might operate in a different way, like this one has a fan to be able to push that heat around the room. And this one doesn't have a fan, but it's gonna radiate that heat outwards. But they're both 1500 watts of power going into them. And usually, if you look on the boxes, you're gonna see the same BTU out of all of them, usually around 5,100, 5,200 BTUs. So just to put that in perspective, our furnace on our RV is 28,000 BTUs. So these aren't gonna move as much heat, but they do put out heat and you can heat a space with a space heater. But just know that each one of them is gonna give out about the same amount of heat. It's just going to be different in how it gets delivered to you. So your preference might come into play there or how you want that heat to move around the room. Now, the thing that people loved about the oil-filled heaters is they kind of give a, a very consistent heat. And when you unplug them, they still give off that heat for a little bit longer compared to when I turn this off or I unplug it, it's, it's done giving off heat. There's no more residual heat that's gonna be there. This one's gonna take a little bit longer to warm up to give you the heat in the room but it's gonna last a little bit longer, so it's kind of a delayed gratification when you're using it. One thing I will say is this is a little bit more bulky, so unless you have a spot inside of the RV, for us, it can kind of be a little bit cumbersome. Where do you put this unless you have a kind of a little nook that you can slide this into? But that's just something to think about when you're looking at a space heater. Now, the other thing is this time of year, we'll, we'll often see more fires because people are using space heaters. Now, space heaters get used all the time without causing a fire, and there's just a few things that you can do to set yourself up so that you, you have a lower fire potential, less hazard potential when you're using a space heater. Don't use one of those power strips. I did a little test where I plugged a space heater into a power strip and you can see using a thermal camera just how much that was heating up. So your breaker may not trip and you could still be creating a fire hazard. So it's just kind of a, a warning that you do wanna be aware of that. You do not wanna cause a fire in your RV because these things go up really fast in a scenario like that. So uh, don't take that lightly. When you're gonna use a space heater, don't leave it unattended. Make sure that you're using it safely and uh, all the stuff that goes along with that. So you can use a space heater to heat up an area, but sometimes you want to be able to have options so that you're away from the RV and you still wanna heat it, but maybe you don't wanna burn through your propane. This next one that people were recommending, you're able to do that. Now with this one, this is an aftermarket add-on that you can do to be able to use the furnace on your RV to use electric rather than propane to heat the RV. There's a, a couple of advantages there for that because when you're using the furnace system, it's gonna heat on a lot of these RVs, that underbelly area. So that way your plumbing is gonna be safe. You're not gonna worry about the pipes freezing. And number two, sometimes when you go to these parks, you're already paying for the site and electric is included. So now with this, you don't have to burn your propane when you can use the electric that's already in that site. So basically you're gonna add a spacer before it goes to the ductwork to be able to heat the entire RV. So right back here where all the ductwork is coming out of the furnace, that's where the spacer would go right, right in there. 
So this is a system that you can have installed on there. It's called Cheap Heat. So they have a, a few different lines. They have one that's starting out at 1800 watts and they have one that goes all the way up to 5,000 watts. So obviously 5,000 watts, you can only use that on a 50 amp connection at an RV park because that's more than a 30 amp connection. So it is pretty pricey looking at it. It's around $1,000 of installs on top of that, but that's just the price that I saw online. And to kind of give you a comparison, they try and say that their 5,000 watt heater is comparable to the 28,000 BTU furnace. So the numbers aren't quite adding up there, but you don't have the inefficiencies that you would have in propane like the exhaust. So there isn't a, like a necessarily apples to apples comparison. So I did do a little test on the RV. I wanted to see basically what three space heaters on the inside of the RV would do. I know it's a little less wattage than the 5,000 watts, but we also don't have the inefficiencies that the ducting system would have. So in 10 minutes, having three space heaters on the inside of the RV, it rose at three degrees. That was a considerable jump in the temperature so I can imagine that that 5,000 watt system would do well. So definitely not one that's good for boondocking, but good if you're going to an RV park. And the price is kind of expensive for what it is. I almost feel like I could build one for a little bit cheaper and get the same effect. I know that they have other safety features built into there that you don't have on space heaters and that you wouldn't have if you did like a DIY unless you intentionally put those in, but it, it comes with the controller so you can switch it between propane or electric. So it's, it's kind of an interesting system. I can see why people would like that. I should have mentioned that our AC, the heat pump on there has almost the same BTUs as this uh, cheap heat add-on system that you can put onto the furnace. So on our last video that we did on heaters, we compare when to use the heat pump on the AC and when to use the furnace. Uh, there is an optimal time to use it for the heat pump and there is an optimal time to use it for the furnace. So I'll, I'll put a link down in the description to that video. It's got a lot of good information in there. Let's get back to it. Now, a third one that was in there, an option that I saw that some people had talked about was putting an electric element inside of your AC. So when the fan is running, you could have a 1500 watt heater running up inside there. Usually what I tell people when they ask about something like this, I, I say it's not really that effective, especially when you're, you might be thinking that it's gonna heat your entire RV and you're basically adding one small space heater in there and it's up inside the AC unit. So it's gonna go through the ductwork and lose some of that heat as it's doing it. Even in the description it says that it's just a chill chaser. It's not really meant to heat your entire RV. Now that brings us to the next one where you're really not trying to heat your entire RV, but it's a way to stay comfortable in the cold. Now, a lot of RVers recommend an electric blanket, something you can stay comfortable on the inside of the RV without having to heat it quite so warmly inside to stay comfortable. So you can still heat the inside of the RV so that your pipes are gonna be protected. You're not gonna have freezing water or anything like that but an electric blanket is something that can keep you warm when it is cold outside. And there's options out there for RVers. There's 12 volt electric blankets. There's 120 volt electric blankets. There's also battery operated electric blankets. I'm gonna put links down in the description to uh, electric blankets, obviously, and all the other heaters that we talked about in this video, uh, because a lot of these solutions can come in really handy. And there's going to be different situations where each one of these is going to shine better than the others. So this is going to allow you to not spend as, as much trying to heat the RV. So you're not going through as much propane, an option to stay warm without having to use too much electricity. So there's definitely options out there for RVers. There's a lot more options out there for heaters. These are the ones that came recommended based off the last video that we did. So if you're interested to see all the other heaters that you can use on the RV and why, what scenarios those are going to shine the best in, you'll probably want to check out that video. So I think that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you on the road. And if we don't, hopefully we will see you next video. Take care.